The Triple H era is in full swing and WWE is reinvigorated. Well, not all of WWE. Pro Wrestling Bits, subscribe now. Triple H taking the helm at Titan Towers has been mostly good news for WWE. Though WWE's surge does date back to before he took control, ratings and ticket sales continue to see steady growth under Triple H. Seriously, WWE's putting up numbers like Pete Davidson. And while it is subjective, creative has been vastly improved in the Triple H era. WWE is telling long-term stories, and they were even able to draw big ratings with the subtle outside-of-the-box teases for Bray Wyatt. But as is the case in any era, not everybody can get a push in WWE. It's been over three months, which is an entire quarter and a fair sample size to see who exactly is on the wrong side of the Triple H era. Let's start with a couple honorable mentions like Lacey Evans. It wasn't too long ago that all Lacey did was talk. Every week she had a different promo about how she turned her tumultuous upbringing into an inspirational story of fighting for this country and raising two daughters. I'm pretty sure she hasn't said a single word since the start of the Triple H era, outside of, I guess I'll have the smoked salmon and catering today. Lacey Evans has that classic blonde, all-American look that Vince McMahon absolutely loved, and even an all-American story. But Triple H's vision of women's wrestling isn't so all-American. In fact, it's closer to a stardom show in Japan. How about Omos? Omos had a clear path to being the new giant in town, which is basically the best slot you can have under Vince McMahon. Braun Strowman was fired and Omos was paired with MVP, who took Bobby Lashley from being Lana's zaddy in a comedy role to WWE Champion. But one of the most high profile hires of the Triple H era was Braun Strowman. And now Omos is more redundant than an ex WWE guy in AEW. Yeah, they're gonna stick it to Vince one of these days, you'll see. <laughs> Omos losing to Braun Strowman is a bad sign for his future, especially in the Triple H era that is more friendly to flippy floppers. Number five is Elias. Right after Triple H took over, I did a preview piece on the Triple H era. Check it out here because I was right on just about everything, including Elias being in trouble under this new regime. Most concerned, unfortunately, is Ezekiel. Elias and or Ezekiel were more or less a WWE creation. Sure, he spent a cup of coffee in NXT, but Triple H always used him as an ambivalent drifter who didn't do much of anything but drift. As I mentioned in that God video, Triple H never really did anything with Elias back in NXT. It was Vince who plucked Elias from NXT obscurity and made him into a top heel. Now Elias doesn't even get to play the guitar anymore. That's like the boogeyman coming to the ring without any face paint or worms, or Tony Khan not being able to tweet. WWE even killed off the Ezekiel character. With just a few hush money payments, Elias went from having two gimmicks to zero. Number four is the 24-7 title. Right after Triple H took over, I did a preview piece on the Triple H era. Have you checked it out yet? Well, if not, I specifically mentioned the 24-7 title as the title most likely to be thrown in the trash. How about the belt most likely to get thrown into the trash can? Well, that's easy, the 24-7 title. And I was right about that shit too. God damn, when you're hot. Anyway, the title was seldom defended after Triple H took over, and now it's in the trash, right next to the rest of Dana Brooke's career, unfortunately. Kobe! At least we'll always have Drake Maverick's wedding. Number three is Jimmy Smith. Unlike the previous regime, the Triple H era has done way more hiring than firing. This was not the case with Jimmy Smith. In fact, Smith was straight shit can without notice as WWE shook up its announced teams across all platforms. I like Jimmy Smith. Was he Jim Ross? No, but who is? Even the AEW Jim Ross isn't Jim Ross. Jimmy Smith has gone on to talk greasy about his time in WWE, referring to his role as a fake commentator who played one on TV. Damn, Triple H is mad at you, girl. Number two is Austin Theory. A bad omen for Theory in the new era was a promo exchange between Theory and top star Roman Reigns. Reigns said, quote, your daddy isn't here anymore, end quote. And boy, was he right. Theory has gone on to lose one match after another and has been made to look like a fool every second he carried around the Money in the Bank briefcase that was designed to get him over. But I'm sure WWE is just doing that as part of a rehab project, right? Wrong. <laughs> WWE sucks at creating new stars, period. It's one of their biggest weak points and Austin Theory is yet another shining example. Maya Angelou once said, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. 
WWE had a young up and coming star with a money in the bank briefcase, but instead of giving him the push that he needed, they buried him. WWE's nucleus of top stars are in their 40s and above. WWE just isn't about young stars right now. That's who they are. Believe them. And the biggest loser of the Triple H era is none other than Tony Twitterfingers himself. With Vince McMahon at the helm in WWE, Tony Khan and AEW look like the cooler, younger company just by default. AEW benefited from Vince McMahon being stuck in his ways, but with Triple H, the IWC whisperer in charge, AEW has been rendered more redundant than a championship belt in AEW. Ticket sales are down, the locker room is a mess, partly due to WWE's tampering, and AEW has lost ground in its pursuit to challenge WWE in key demos. AEW couldn't be any more entrenched in second place, and WWE's rise in the Triple H era has coincided with AEW's recent implosion. Not only is their biggest draw, CM Punk, all but gone from the company, there are now rumors that he could pop up in WWE down the line. Poor Anthony. Unless, of course, CM Punk implodes in WWE, which could never happen, right? Who else are the big losers of the Triple H era? Tell me in the comments!